What's up guys, welcome back to the Adam SRC YouTube channel, and today I want to show you guys my LiPo battery discharger. Uh, I originally made this because, well, my LiPo charger doesn't discharge batteries at more than a couple decimals of an amp, which isn't very good, especially when you're running high capacity batteries. And the dedicated LiPo battery dischargers that you can find... I don't remember exact pricing, but I remember seeing them being close to that $100 range, especially for ones that seem to be uh, pretty efficient and discharge at a good rate. And of course, I'm the type of person, if I can make it, I will save the money and make it instead of buying it. So I came up with this. This is simply uh, three bulbs. I'm not sure exactly what their purpose is. They are 12 volt bulbs. I know that for a fact. Um, and they seem to pull about two amps a piece. Uh, I'm trying to remember the testing I did. I did some testing with the multimeter and figured that it's pretty darn close to two uh, amps for these specific bulbs. Again, I don't really know exactly uh, what type of bulbs they are. I know I have two different z designs here. I have one that has like a high and low, and then these, they have a single filament in them. This one, you know, has two filaments. Uh, now, I am only using one of those filaments. I am not using both of them. I want to go ahead and say the disclaimer that I'm not 100% sure if this is safe for your LiPo batteries. I have been using this for quite a while and have had no issues. Um, but again, do this at your own risk. I am not an expert. And I also want to state, so, of course, the need for this. Why would you need this? Well, every now and then, you go out and... It rains, or for some reason, you don't run your cars. And if you run big cars like I do, I have a Creighton. You know, it's not a huge car. There are bigger cars, you know, an X-Max or something like that. Uh, but I'm still running batteries, you know, that have 6,000 milliamp capacity. And, well, if I don't, if I decide that I don't want to run the car, that I can't, I want a way to be able to get that battery back to the storage voltage. And that's where this thing comes in handy. I simply just plug in my two prongs right here, um, and it starts discharging right away, and quite fast. Like I say, it discharges about 6 amps because there's three bulbs that draw 2 amps a piece, and I, you know, I wouldn't discharge any super small batteries with this, uh, but for my bigger batteries, uh, this definitely works extremely well, and I run lots of big batteries. So, it's very simple construction, and... I made this in a rush, so you can probably see, like, none of these surfaces lined up. I didn't sand it, and I made this with, like, particle board. Uh, so, again, the construction is uh, very crude, not very good. Uh, but sometimes that's just kind of how I do things. I do it in a rush, and I do it to be functional. So, I have this top board. It has the three holes drilled into it. And, of course, you know, you can just keep on expanding this, putting more light bulbs in here. Um or, you know, changing different types of light bulbs to draw different amperage. And who knows, you could even add switches uh, to select light bulbs uh, so you can discharge at certain amperages. Which, again, that would be very easy to do. And I simply have the holes drilled just big enough for these bulbs to slide out. And that is very important because if a bulb burns out or something happens, I can take all these bulbs out and replace one of them. So the way it works is on the bottom side, I have this plastic right here and there's a piece of foam in between the bottom of the light bulbs and this. And this just keeps tension on these screws and prevents them from coming out along with this, the tight holes in the wood makes them quite hard to actually pull out. But as soon as you get this loose, you guys will see how simple this design really is. So I pull this piece of plastic out I have my foam. And there you go. You can see it's a very simple design. I simply have wire soldered onto the bottom of the bulbs. And, you know, I have the positive going to the tip of the battery, whatever you want, or excuse me, to the tip of the light bulb. And then the ground is soldered onto the side. Now, sometimes... Well, when making this, I had issue with the solder sticking to the side of the bulb. you got to get it hot enough, and it can kind of be challenging at times. Um, 
Also, an easier way to make these replaceable would be if you can find little sockets that you can solder wires to, and then you can actually unscrew the bulbs like you're supposed to be able to do. But I just kind of went with what I had on hand. Now, keep in mind that these are, well, these get extremely hot and do not leave this unattended because, I mean, it gets so hot you can't touch it and it will burn your hand. It could start a fire if it comes into contact with something. Uh, and then I just have this piece of plastic down here, just really so when you look at it from this view, you don't see inside and it just looks, it adds, it to me it makes it look a little more clean uh, to this crude box design, I know. And then these wires, I simply just drilled a hole just big enough to get the wires through, did a little bit of heat shrink again to clean up the looks, and then added my two bullet points on. Now, if I had to take these wires and feed them back through, I would have to unsolder these bullet points or uh, clip them off. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, I do realize that, yes, I do not have a standard connector on these. And the reason being is that way if I ever get like an XT60 connector or XT90 connector, I can still discharge the battery. I run EC5 connectors, so... I just used some bullets that came with a bunch of connectors, and to me, this is a little bit easier to plug in. Uh, now, I don't, I've thought about this before, and I actually don't see much, too much risk in jumping and arcing. And the reason being is if you plug one in, it's plugged in, and you can't really touch it. And if you do, it's not going to hurt anything because the circuit's not completed. Uh, and if you always play it safe and plug in the ground wire first, you shouldn't really ever have an issue. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, guys, this is a very simple design. I highly recommend it, and you can scale it to whatever your liking is. You could do 10 light bulbs that draw 0.5 amps, whatever suits your need. Uh, I just figured I'd share this design because, well, I figured there's some other people who have this similar issue to me, and... It really is quite simple. It doesn't take too much skill uh, to make something like this. And like I say, it's an easy way to save, you know, $80 or any cost on a LiPo discharger. Now, of course, you do have to uh, watch the LiPos as you're discharging them because, well, there is no safety cutoff. It will drain your batteries flat. So sometimes I usually just hook this up. I hook this up to the balance port and then I can read the live feed from the battery uh, and that way I can make sure that it doesn't under or over discharge and it is also worth mentioning that again this discharges very fast so it's not like you're gonna be impatiently waiting for this to di discharge it is pretty rapid and like I say again I can't speak on how that affects the health of your batteries uh, but I haven't had any problems with this, and if I do start having issues with uh, this ruining the batteries, like if I specifically notice that this is ruining the batteries, I will update you guys and know. But hey, if this helped you out, uh, consider subscribing, leave comments, or do something. Anything helps out the channel, guys. Uh, even clicking on this video helps. So again, thanks for watching, and maybe this helped you guys out.